Seeming public apathy over climate change is often attributed to a deficit in comprehension. The public knows too little science, it is claimed, to understand the evidence or avoid being misled. Widespread limits on technical reasoning aggravate the problem by forcing citizens to use unreliable cognitive heuristics to assess risk. We conducted a study to test this account and found no support for it. Members of the public with the highest degree of science literacy and technical reasoning capacity were not the most concerned about climate change. Rather, they were the ones among whom cultural polarization was greatest. This result suggests that public divisions over climate change stem not from the public's incomprehension of science, but from a distinctive conflict of interest between the personal interest individuals have in forming beliefs in line with those held by others with whom they share close ties, and the collective one they all share in making use of the best available science to promote common welfare. The study collected data on the climate change risk perceptions of a large representative sample of U.S. adults, 1,540 of them. Measures were selected to permit assessment of two competing accounts of public opinion on climate change. One, already adverted to, can be called the Science Comprehension Thesis, SCT. Because members of the public do not know what scientists know, or think the way scientists think, they predictably fail to take climate change as seriously as scientists believe they should. The alternative explanation can be referred to as the Cultural Cognition Thesis, or CCT. CCT posits that individuals, as a result of a complex of psychological mechanisms, tend to form perceptions of societal risks that cohere with values characteristics of groups with which they identify. Whereas science comprehension thesis emphasizes a conflict between scientists and the public, cultural cognition thesis stresses one between different segments of the public, whose members are motivated to fit their interpretations of scientific evidence to their competing cultural philosophies. Science Comprehension Thesis asserts, first, that ordinary members of the public underestimate the seriousness of climate change because of the difficulty of the scientific evidence. If this is correct, concern over climate change should be positively correlated with science literacy. That is, concern should increase as people become more science literate. Second, and even more important, science comprehension thesis attributes low concern with climate change to limits on the ability of ordinary members of the public to engage in technical reasoning. Recent research in psychology posits two discrete forms of information processing. System 1, which involves rapid, visceral judgments that manifest themselves in various decision-making heuristics. And System 2, which requires conscious reflection and calculation. Most members of the public, according to this research, typically employ System 1 reasoning without resorting to more effortful System 2 processing. Although System 1 works well for most daily contingencies, citizens' predominant reliance on heuristic rather than more analytic modes of reasoning is viewed as leading them to underestimate climate change risks which are remote and abstract compared to a host of more emotionally charged risks like terrorism that the public is thought to overestimate. These predictions were unsupported. As respondents' science literacy scores increased, concern with climate change decreased. There was also a negative correlation between numeracy and climate change risk. The differences were small, but nevertheless inconsistent with science comprehension thesis which predicts effects with the opposite signs. Cultural cognition thesis also generates a testable prediction. It posits that persons who subscribe to a hierarchical, individualistic worldview, one that ties authority to conspicuous social rankings and eschews collective interference with the decisions of individuals possessing such authority, tend to be skeptical of environmental risks. Such people intuitively perceive that Widespread acceptance of such risks would license restrictions on commerce and industry, forms of behavior that hierarchical individualists value. In contrast, persons who hold an egalitarian, communitarian worldview, one favoring less regimented forms of social organization and greater collective attention to individual needs, 
tend to be morally suspicious of commerce and industry, to which they attribute social inequity. They therefore find it congenial to believe those forms of behavior are dangerous and worthy of restriction. On this view, one would expect risks. Our data, consistent with previous studies, supported the cultural cognition thesis. Hierarchical individualists rated climate change risks significantly lower than did egalitarian communitarians. Even controlling for scientific literacy and numeracy, both hierarchy and individualism predicted less concern over climate change. The finding that cultural worldviews explain more variance than science literacy and numeracy, however, does not by itself demonstrate that science comprehension thesis is less supportable than cultural cognition thesis. Science comprehension thesis asserts not merely that members of the public lack scientific knowledge, but also that they lack the habits of mind needed to assimilate it, and are thus constrained to rely on fallible, heuristic alternatives. Proponents of this bounded rationality position treat cultural cognition, the conforming of beliefs to the ones that predominate within one's group, as simply one of the unreliable System 1 heuristics used to compensate for the inability to assess scientific information in a dispassionate analytical manner. This claim generates another testable prediction. If cultural cognition is merely a heuristic substitute for scientific knowledge and System 2 reasoning, reliance on it should be lowest among those individuals whose scientific knowledge and System 2 reasoning capacity are highest. Science comprehension thesis thus implies that as science literacy and numeracy increase, the skepticism over climate change associated with a hierarchical individualistic worldview should lessen, and the gap between people with hierarchical individualistic worldviews and those with egalitarian communitarian ones should diminish. But this prediction, too, was unsupported. Among egalitarian communitarians, science literacy and numeracy showed a small positive correlation with concern about climate change risks. But among hierarchical individualists, science literacy numeracy is negatively correlated with concern. Hence, polarization actually becomes larger, not smaller, as science literacy and numeracy increase. Because the contribution that culture makes to disagreement grows as science literacy and numeracy increase, it is not plausible to view cultural cognition as a heuristic substitute for the knowledge or capacities that science comprehension thesis views the public as lacking. On the contrary, our findings could be viewed as evidence of how remarkably well-equipped ordinary individuals are to discern which stances towards scientific information secure their personal interests. We will elaborate on this interpretation, which we offer as our own best provisional understanding of the results of this and related studies. For the ordinary individual, the most consequential effect of his beliefs about climate change is likely to be on his relations with his peers. A hierarchical individualist who expresses anxiety about climate change might well be shunned by his co-workers at an oil refinery in Oklahoma City. A similar fate will likely befall the egalitarian communitarian English professor who reveals to colleagues in Boston that she thinks the scientific consensus on climate change is a hoax. At the same time, neither the personal beliefs an ordinary person forms about scientific evidence nor any action he takes, as a consumer, say, or a democratic voter, will by itself aggravate or mitigate the dangers of climate change. On his own, he is just not consequential enough to matter. Given how much the ordinary individual depends on peers for support, material and emotional, and how little impact his beliefs have on the physical environment, he would likely be best off if he formed risk perceptions that minimized any danger of estrangement from his community. A long-established body of work examining motivated cognition supports this conjecture. Both to avoid dissonance and to secure their group standing, individuals unconsciously seek out and credit information supported of self-defining values and attitudes, such as the shared worldviews featured in the study of cultural cognition. The predictive power of cultural worldviews implies that the average member of the public performs these tasks quite proficiently. Our data, consistent with that observed in other settings, 
suggest that those with the highest degree of science literacy and numeracy perform such tasks even more discerningly. Fitting information to identity-defining commitments makes demands on all manners of cognition, including both System 1 and System 2 reasoning. For ordinary citizens, the reward for acquiring greater scientific knowledge and more reliable technical reasoning capacities is a greater facility to discover and use or explain away evidence relating to their group's position. One aim of science communication, we submit, should be to dispel this tragedy of the risk perception commons. A communication strategy that focuses only on transmission of sound scientific information, our results suggest, is unlikely to do that. As worthwhile as it would be, simply improving the clarity of scientific information will not dispel public conflict, as long as the climate change debate continues to feature cultural meanings that divide citizens of opposing worldviews. It does not follow, however, that nothing can be done to promote constructive and informed public deliberations, because citizens understandably tend to conform their beliefs about societal risks to beliefs that predominate among their peers, communicators should endeavor to create a deliberative climate in which accepting the best available science does not threaten any group's values. Effective strategies include use of culturally diverse communicators, whose affinity with different communities enhance their credibility and information framing techniques that invest policy solutions with resonances congenial to diverse groups. Perfecting such techniques through a new science of science communication is a public good of singular importance. Thanks for watching. Every cell of each plant and animal contains genetic information coded onto the DNA molecule.